After resolving the issues of the Deku people in the Southern Swamp, Link must turn himself to the north to save the Gorons of Termina, who find themselves trapped in a never-ending winter. Their greatest warrior, Darmani III, went to Snowhead Temple, which is the source of the blizzard. Unfortunately, he meets with an untimely demise. But after putting his spirit to rest, it's on Link's shoulders to save the Gorons, who will surely freeze or starve to death, whichever comes first. Well, technically the moon will probably kill them all first, but you know, one thing at a time. But how does Snowhead Temple's construction and music create a mood for our experience there? And today I present to you why Snowhead Temple's theme is so uncomfortable. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Okay, so starting off with the temple's design. In the first room, we walk in and we're met with a somewhat foreboding atrium. Right off the bat, we have to walk through what appears to be the ribs of some fairly large monster. After pushing this block forward, we enter a room with three available doors. In the 3DS remake, they added a lot of detail to these doors, giving them large frames and molding with vibrant colors to help set them apart. But you also have these bold designs that leave a strong impression. Personally, when I look at this, my lingering Catholic guilt makes me think of stained glass. But also the sharp angles of the triangles mixed with the large curves gives off some Art Deco vibes which is definitely an odd choice. And I'd like to give a real quick shout out to architectureofzelda.com for tipping me off to this. I highly recommend checking out the site if you're interested in learning about more of the design choices in the Zelda franchise's building and structures. As far as I can tell, there isn't a big tie-in with any real world culture like there was in Woodfall Temple. In fact, it feels extremely distinct from the architecture we see in the Goron village just outside, which kind of leads me to ask the question, who the heck built this place? I mean, the Gorons in Termina are clearly expert metalworkers and stonemasons. Hell, they better be. They live on a diet of rocks. Actually, do they call their stonemasons chefs or their chefs stonemasons? Anyways, the design of Snowhead is fairly distinct to anything we see in town, which has a much more tribal aesthetic to it. And you could say, well, this place is the temple. Maybe they design their places of worship differently. But the main building in town is called Goron Shrine, and it looks nothing like this. The only place with similar designs to the temple is in the hot springs where they buried the Goron warrior Darmani, which features similar geometric patterns that we can see on various things in Snowhead Temple. Of course, we do have to talk about the main room in the temple, which features a giant pillar that Link has to break apart to reach the dungeon's boss, as well as these would-be bridges. The architecture of this bridge is of interest, getting its support from below with these wood beams built into the walls. These are cantilever bridges, which is a type of bridge that derives its support from digging into something with a vertical surface. The wood is an interesting choice, as it would probably lower the total weight that these structures could support. And as you get higher, the suspensions are made of stone with no support at all. However, I will say that these were consciously made for the Gorons, as they would be the only race in Termina able to roll over the gaps in between. And this makes total sense, but it just really bugs me how much of a total disconnect the design has with everything else we've seen from Gorons in the game. Honestly, I really don't have a huge amount to say about this temple. The only other rooms with a particularly interesting design are the mini-boss rooms with the whiz robes. In the original version, there were these sort of hieroglyphic markings on the wall, and the room had much more brown and tan tones to it. But in the 3DS remake, we have a lot more gray, and instead of the hieroglyphics, we have these rather ostentatious pillars and designs that fit more in line with the updated door frames. Honestly, this might be my least favorite dungeon in the game, and we still have to talk about Great Bay Temple. Anyways, let's get into the music. The Snowhead Temple theme is actually a lot spookier than I remember it being. I really like how understated the song is. It's darker than I feel the dungeon calls for, especially in the 3DS version, which greatly upped the brightness and colors, but somehow I don't feel like it's out of place. Let's break down all the parts that go into making this song. Right as you walk into the temple out from the blizzard, we get a few bars of just straight up wind. It's atmospheric, and it imparts the sense of cold that Link is almost certainly feeling. It is Snowhead Temple after all. Well, apart from the areas that randomly have lava in them for some reason. The first sound we hear after the wind is what I like to call an icicle crashing sound. The sample they used for this is a really nice shattering sound effect that Kondo put an echo on to create a sense of size inside the temple. Considering how enormous the main room is, you could easily imagine a huge echo reverberating throughout the cavern as a shard dropped all the way from the top. Finally, the first actual instrument we hear is a piano. 
It's kind of funny, because obviously the Goron culture in Hyrule was big on drums. And there's nothing to lead us to believe that that's not the same in Termina. The music in the Goron Shrine is heavy on drums, and even Link in Goron form plays them. But there isn't any actual drums used in Snowhead Temple's theme. I think this also adds to my feeling that Snowhead is somehow disconnected from the Gorons. Anyways, the piano starts with a background track that just plays these staccato half-step notes. Staccato, for those who may not know, essentially means you cut off the end of the note really abruptly. This, combined with the two notes being dissonant, as well as the whole section fading in and out, imparts a sense of unease. In a lot of music that is designed to be listened to for comfort, they often set up an expectation for the listener, either in the rhythm or in the melody. But when a song does something unexpected, it can make the listener feel uncomfortable. Which leads me into the second part of the piano. We get these tritone cluster chords, which Kondo loves to use when trying to make the listener uncomfortable. A tritone is two notes that are exactly half an octave apart and essentially impart a feeling of tension. But they're usually used as a leaping off point to complete a harmony and make the listener say, oh yeah, we did it, this is nice. And Kondo has this going on with two of these notes, but instead of completing the major chord and making it pretty, he says, nah, get a load of this, and throws this note in the middle and makes it real ugly. And not only does he put a short rest in the middle of these notes to throw off the rhythm, he slides a second ugly cluster chord in the middle. And like I said, whereas many songs will resolve a tritonal chord eventually so that the listener can bask in the glow of a harmony, the Snowhead Temple theme never does that. You just get stuck with these dissonant chords and after eight bars, this part of the song disappears before turning up again later. It's a huge tease to the listener. Sort of like your friend promising you a plate of hot, delicious french fries. But it turns out that they're a day old and he just stuck them in the microwave to heat them up. Ugh. Next, in order to add some more random discomfort, Kondo takes a page from the Shadow Temple's theme and throws in what I'm gonna call some goosebump sounds. Because listen to this and tell me you can't hear it being played in the background while some kids in a Goosebumps episode get spooked. And as a fun side note, this sound is also a sample from a library called Distorted Reality 1, and the track's name is Pit Hit 1. Next, there are some extremely understated strings. Honestly, I almost missed finding these when putting this list together, but the sound they make is just peak anxiety. It's quiet, uncomfortable, and rising in pitch making us feel the pressure just a little bit more. After that, we hear some vocals. Which are the exact same as the ones we heard in Ocarina of Time, usually being featured in cutscenes with the Triforce Goddesses. It's interesting to note that this vocal track is also featured in the Mountain Village song from the game, so it kind of ties in theme-wise. Finally, the last song we hear in the temple are chimes. There's not too much to say on this one. Kondo also used chimes and wind for the music used in the ice cavern in Ocarina of Time. There's something about chimes and ice that has become so ingrained in our minds through movies and other pop culture that it just fits perfectly. And Kondo knows this, so finding a chime placed in the middle of this song is a slam dunk. I would say that the chimes appearing so minimally in the track further adds to the discomfort of the listener, who doesn't even hear this until about two minutes into the song. Suddenly you're like, wait, what, there's chimes in this too? Once again, playing with our expectations of the song, adding to the subconscious discomfort that it makes you feel. At the end of the day, while I really like Kondo's work on the music, I think the design of Snowhead Temple is less inspired. I really like the giant pillar being a central puzzle that you're constantly coming back to, slowly whittling it down to proceed, but apart from a few design choices here and there, it's mostly just snow and stone. Again, I think this can be attributed to the team only having a year to create this game, and for that, I think they did an amazing job. However, there are other areas of the game that shine much more brightly. But what do you think about Snowhead Temple? Tell us about it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, consider checking out our series on Ocarina of Time's dungeons. But either way, until next time, have a wonderful day.